Hi everyone, how's it going? I uh, thought I'd join you for a little get ready with me in a new location. Uh, this is at our table, our sort of kitchen slash dining room table. You may get to enjoy the background noise of everything happening over in that room. Sunday morning, kind of a dreary day, but yet even dreary day natural lighting is pretty good lighting. So I'm popping on. This is gonna be an all drugstore look. I just grabbed a bunch of things from my collection. This is the Hard Candy Smoothing Primer Balm, which I feel is very, very, very much like Tatcha's. And I feel like I can see an effect like right after I put it on. I'm just realizing I don't have any other mirror here right now other than my phone right in front of me. Might need a little something extra. My skin is not looking too bad today. I've got a couple of blemishes that have sort of resolved down there on my chin. Um, definitely got some dark circles today. Um, no big deal, but I was just up late last night uh, fixing a leak with the air conditioner. So my uh, husband over there was playing virtual poker with his friends. <laughs> Um, no, I didn't actually fix it, but I just, I dealt with the problem. I could hear a drip and I looked in this area underneath our upstairs unit and sure enough, um, some kind of condensation issue. So you look it up on Google, you'll find that that's kind of a common problem and we probably will need to get people out here to deal with it. But, Bub, you didn't even hear me bragging on you. What? Oh, I was just talking about my dark circles from staying up late last night fixing the air conditioner while my husband played poker, virtual poker with his buddies. Oh, I thought you said bragging on me, not ragging on me. <laughs> no, I was not bragging on you, I was bragging on you. <laughs> You'd like to come in and say anything for yourself. What? See, he has nothing to say for himself. He's just gonna probably be back there in the background and do this move. I have no defense. I think basically he just had a lot of confidence in my ability to just, you know, see a problem, figure out a quick solution, run with it. Just, you know, I don't need no man. Um, this is my infallible, it's called a long wear shaping stick. It's just a stick foundation. I have it in shell beige. And I hadn't used this in a while, but I remembered kind of noting that this was a top drugstore foundation stick for me. So I thought I'd pull that back in. I've also been using my uh, Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Stick here and there. But look, I mean, it glides on with a lot of ease. It's not too dewy, not too matte. Sorry, just gotta make sure all the little places are blended. Sometimes the phone makes it look better than it actually is. But yeah, everybody's just kind of hanging out in the living room right now watching Sophia the First. This is my Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. This is in C4. Staying up a little later than normal last night. I slept in a little longer than normal this morning, so that puts me here. But I thought, hey, I'll still do a video because I've been wanting to do more like change of scenery situations. Can you turn that down just a little bit? Just in case there's any copyright issues. It's on the couch. Okay, so dabbing this in, this is a great concealer. Um, I feel like it's not quite as much coverage as the e.l.f. camo concealer, but to me, like it's just a little thinner. It doesn't do quite as much, but it's really close, and it definitely has a nice feel on the skin, not over drying on your under eye. Oh yeah, I think that's looking great. A great little combo there with the foundation stick. I didn't clean up anything behind me and yesterday's McDonald's Diet Coke is still there. Now for a little setting powder, I also pulled out this. This is my Revolution Bake and Blot in the translucent shade. And I remembered liking this. It's a really beautifully textured powder, um, but just a light translucent powder you can use to set the under eye area, the T-zone, wherever you need to set. I don't know, you gotta watch it a little bit. It could look a little chalky um, if you get too much going on, but you can see how it's semi-mattifying me, you know? It's not making me look too, like, caked up or anything, but I'm just kind of wanting to not have too much of a tacky texture on my skin. And then, um, just to lightly, lightly set the rest of my face, I pulled out L'Oreal True Match. This is in Buff Beige. So this is just about, again, um, helping the overall texture. I'm not really trying to change my color or my coverage or apply a big 
crap ton of powder. I'm just wanting a little bit to make the surface of my skin nice and consistent. I feel like I'm the queen of a light bit of powder. That's my go-to application process with powder. Then I pulled out this. I have to hold it kind of carefully because this color likes to pop out, but this is my e.l.f. contouring quad. I like it because there's this bronzer shade, the contour, the skin tone powder, and then this has just a little bit of glow to it actually. So I think I'm gonna start with the contour shade and just give myself a little light bit of something there. Somebody was passing through. Hi. <laughs> Are you mouse walking? Mouse walking is when we go like this and we scurry around. I hear it. I hear it. I'm taking now like just kind of a combination of these two colors and getting it on my forehead. Bring the skin back to life. You also get to enjoy the evolution of my bun throughout this video as it slowly starts to fall. Whole chestal region. Then I think I'll take a little more of just the bronze shade and go across here, warming things up a little bit. Yeah, Bubba's chewing on your unicorn. No big deal. Maybe a little bit of this, a lot picks up on my brush where I go in there. I would say I don't like that um, bacon blot from Revolution quite as well as my Rimmel Stay Matte. Um, that's just a little bit easier to throw on and feel like I don't even have to be careful with this because I know it's not gonna look cakey at all. Next for a blush, I pulled out a nice cool pinky option here with this CoverGirl. This is the pink candy shade and it's just like a matte, really pretty, fresh, cool pink blush. Bring on the life, bring on the youth to the cheeks. That's what I say. Hmm. It's very buildable. Like I'm satisfied with this, but I could go more than this actually. Um, just a really nice blush. I love those Cheekers blushes and they actually have quite a few colors. Um, what did I pull out? Oh, for highlight. Um, I've got another L'Oreal stick and you know, I know I love the foundation stick, but this one, uh, the highlighter stick, I'm not so sure. Slay and Rose is what it's called. And let's just go straight to the cheek. I'm in a no fear kind of mood this morning. It's really like dry feeling, not at all sticky. Oh, it's raining. Glad they mowed yesterday, but like it's not, not stack, stacky. <laughs> Not sticky or tacky at all. Stacky, I just made a new word. Um, so it's pretty easy to move across the cheeks. But you see what I'm working with there, just a little little glow. There's what that looks like. like. It's a really pretty brightening color. Not sure why I haven't gone to this more. And it just blends easy. I think we will meet more often. And then I pulled out my Neutrogena Radiant Setting Spray, probably my favorite drugstore mist right now. It's the one that says peptides, just floating out there. It's a really nice mist and it does make you look kind of dewy after you put it on. Soothing, probably got a little in my coffee. It's good. I did pull out one thing that's not drugstore. Um, I'm just loving it so much. Like, I, it's so funny because I felt like I was regretting the purchase when I got it off of Amazon. I'm like, you don't need, you know, this double-ended ABH thing to replace your, like, $2 wet and wild thing you can't find anymore. But it's a great little pencil, and I'm a little bummed that the writing is already wearing off. Come on, ABH. But one end is matte, and that's the end that I like to use to brighten in my lower inner rim. And I've been doing this step actually at this stage of the game. I just go ahead and do it early. If I know I'm not gonna put like a smoky, smudgy liner in there. And I feel brightened up. And then I take the other end and I just encircle this area. And no matter what I look I'm doing, I feel like I like that little bit of brightness there. Not sure you can tell from this camera. This is just my iPhone. Um, and then I put a little bit up under my brow and a little bit right in here. Just make that little U shape right above your Cupid's bow. Boom, pouty. And then for my brows today, I got out my Physician's Formula Brow Last. So this is kind of like when I'm just feeling like making it one step this is it because it's color and it holds really well. Some might say it's not the easiest thing to use. Shade is dark brown. Angled brush that you really need to clean off because it's creamy, very creamy. And then 
sorry, <laughs> trying not to hold this right in front of myself and just take it through, but then it sets, it lasts really well and it holds your brows in place. It's not necessarily like any easier than the um, pomade from Maybelline that I like, but the only thing is that the tool is enclosed, so you don't have like one more thing just floating around to remember like, oh, I need my brow thing, oh, I need the brush. The brush is in it. How are you doing over there, bub? Good. Why? Do I look good? No, you look great. I just thought I'd, thought I'd ask. Oh, okay. Thanks for checking in. Don't let Bubba get into the LOLs. There's a lot of choking hazards right behind him there. Anybody else's kids love these LOL dolls? Yeah, it's all fun and games until it's a doll that they didn't want and you have no control over it because it's a surprise. Yesterday, Biddy got a boy doll and I don't know. I don't know if we need to be doing this LOL thing anymore. I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting a boy doll. It's fine, but you know, if your sister gets the one that looks like a princess and you get the boy, there's gonna be conflict. Trying to get it just right, but it has gotten rather dim now, what with the rain. It's gonna be a pretty gloomy day all day, I think. Good thing Bub and I got our hoops <laughs> out of our system yesterday. We shot hoops a couple times with our new basketball hoop. I just asked him, I'm like, Bub, how can I be more like Michael Jordan? How can I improve? Bulls documentary, last two episodes tonight. I think I've got a pretty decent shot though. But now my ankle hurts and I'm kind of sore. That one end, I know I've told the story before about how I got this scar on this side, but it was Bub opening a door for me and I was also opening a door for me. And it hit me and I started bleeding. That was back in college. And I get to remember it every single day that I feel in this brow. Okay, I didn't bring down an eye primer. Let's see if we can't just take a little speck of concealer. That's kind of my backup eye primer. I've never used this particular concealer as eye primer, but we'll just use a little bit. It's gonna really blank out my lids. Pull it up into my crease a little. Can't see what I'm doing. And then the eyeshadow palette I have here is Wet n Wild, and it is the Rose in the Air, kind of their modern renaissance dupe type palette. I think I'm gonna take this warm shade right here, and we're gonna take that right to our crease. Sorry, I know as I pick up things, the light keeps adjusting. Oh, and it's getting a little brighter outside now. Okay, nice warmy warm crease. Then I think I'm gonna go even a little more reddish. We'll go to this shade, kind of a deep rust. And we will kind of outer corner that. Definitely wanna tap off the excess with these shades. Then I'm gonna blend my edges. I don't want this look to be too complex because you know, we got, we got issues <laughs> going on here with lighting and just not in my normal place. But some of you guys might have this on hand and haven't used it in a while, so I thought, let's let's go for it. Then, um, on the outer part of my lid, why do you say we bring in some berry right there? See, wouldn't it be handy if this was a mirror right there? So flat brush, and I'm just taking this really pretty pigmented berry and patting it there. And then you know how I like to do. Pat it, flip it, you old pat and flip. Get it in the outer corner and get it in the crease. You guys ever do these living room floor campouts? Like you um, set up an air mattress in your living room for the kids? Oh man, they're nuts about it. Second straight Friday doing that. I don't think anything makes Belle happier. She cried uh, last weekend when we had to take the air mattress down and she actually kissed the air mattress as it deflated. <laughs> when I take this brush, I have nothing on it and I'm just letting all that blend together. The warmth that we set up the crease with, the pinkiness that we've got in that outer corner. And then, what are we thinking about for lid? Let's go to this right here. Kind of a dusty lilac. I feel like it's so opaque that it's overlapping my berry more than I wanted it to, you know? Like it's actually kind of blanking out some of the berry on that side. So back comes some berry. And I guess I'm just gonna commit to the all matte here. I'm gonna go to that cream and I've got my little bit of shimmer as you can see from my ABH pencil. 
but now we brighten right there. Do you guys want to see vlogs again? How do you feel about vlogs? I feel like I want to do vlogs again, but I don't want to bring them to you if you don't want them. You know what I mean? So, who wants a vlog? Then, oh, I was going to do a little bit of powder liner. I got this Profusion. They actually call this an angled eyebrow brush, but I've liked using that really fine brush right there for some eyeshadow. And I think this deep dark brown might just do it because we know it's going to be pigmented. And let me just come in. Bring it on in, bring it on in, bring it on in. UCA cheerleading camp, anyone? <laughs> bring it on in, bring it on in. Ships and sailors, anyone? If you know, you know. Did you know when I was in high school, one of my greatest achievements, one of my happiest moments was at the end of UCA camp, my senior year, I got offered an, uh, an application to be on the staff. I can't remember a happier day. Like we went, I, I think mom and bub and pup, I, I know they were all around and we celebrated. It was so much fun. You can't really see a profound difference, but I've got a little depth along the lash line now. For lashes, we're gonna use a never before tried combo here. I've got this Essence Volume Booster Lash Primer. I'm trying all the lash primers in the world. And I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna do it lightly because I've learned you shouldn't go too hard with the lash primer. And then we're gonna see if we can improve the effect of Bambi eyes, because I did not love Bambi eyes, but maybe with the primer it'll help. So I'm gonna try to give my lashes a really, really good curl and we'll go for it. Every day is an experiment in my lash world. I'm almost done. So real good curl there. Now I'm gonna take this primer. It says it has acai oil and mango butter. White primer, put it on really lightly. Only what it takes to get to every lash. Okay, call that done. Okay, while that's cooking and drying, I think I'm gonna use my CoverGirl Universal Nude. I hate, here's why I have to keep the box. Because CoverGirl, just puts a number on their products and I wanna be able to say the shade name and I only have the shade name if I have the box, but this is the shade called Universal Nude and the number for your reference is 960. But I really, really like this shade for long wearing lip color. You'll see it's so natural, lasts a really long time. I kinda am getting back into my long wearing lip colors after my Rimmel Provocalypse, which I love that product too, but I don't have a shade in that that's quite like this. And CoverGirl Outlast is great also. Gotta say this shade is coordinating pretty nicely with the eye. So we wanna let that dry down. Now we flip back to the lashes and we're gonna try the Bambi Eye Mascara from L'Oreal. And see if we like the look. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say vast improvement. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the length is great. The separation is really good too. That lash primer has done pretty good for me on several occasions. I feel like I'd only really had the Milani for a while in terms of a good drugstore lash primer, but this one from Essence is doing well. I know L'Oreal Voluminous makes a lash primer, but in my experience, as has been the case with um, just L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara in general, drops my curl really fast, kind of heavy, so we can't have that. And that's why I kind of learned, you know, Susan comments on a recent video and says, you know, don't use too much lash primer. And it really, it makes a world of difference. You only need a little because too much will weigh down your lashes and too much will also be harder to coat with your other mascara. I'm kind of feeling a little disappointed by the Marc Jacobs one. That one, like, I thought was gonna be really good, but it just, even though I try to go super light with it, it can seem a little chunky. But yeah, I overall feel quite a bit better about that Bambi Eyes mascara on top of the primer. So our last step of the look is just to take the balm that comes with our Outlast and pop it on top, because that's feeling all dry and kind of tight then you put this balm on. 
feels really good. Um, I would say this CoverGirl Outlast still feels like a little bit more on the lips, a little heavier on the lips perhaps, or a little tighter on the lips. It's a hard to describe feeling, but there's 100% dry down, and then it lasts all day with a balm refreshing it, and it feels like a little more on the lips than that Rimmel. I need to get my mom, uh, find some shades of that Rimmel that she would like because I think she'd enjoy that. Because it goes nowhere, you know, it doesn't slip and slide outside your lip line. Hi, Angel. Hi, sweetie. Okay, so we are gonna call that done for our little casual Sunday morning face. What do you think, Mama? What do you think, Angel? He says, I'd like to grab everything that's up there. Would you like to see a brush? Would you like to hold a brush? Where does that go? No! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll try to do some more of this like makeup on location, different places. I do have that nice Bye, mirror. Daddy. Biddy, you want up too? <laughs> Biddy's here. Hi, Biddy. In case you're new to my channel and you're like, how many, how many little kids are there in this family? We got three. What are you up to this morning, Biddy? I'm just sweeping and sweeping. I didn't call daddy up. You didn't call daddy up last night? <laughs> nice lips. Nice pout. Biddy loves her um, nighttime lip balm regimen. What's your favorite kind of lip balm to put on at night? The candy one. The candy scented one? Yeah. Yes, I've let her start using several different Laneige lip sleeping masks because she's had a lot of dryness. <laughs> anyway, my friends, what I was saying was I've got that nice little um, portable mirror that mounts your camera that I'm going to probably be using because then different times of day I can do this really easy when there's not daylight. But it's raining out there. Look at it, Biddy. It's raining. It's pouring. The old man is snoring. <laughs> All right, say bye, everybody. We're going to go now. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. See you later. See you later. <laughs>